The world champs and Celtics are tied up at a game apiece thanks to dominant defensive performances by Milwaukee in game one, Boston in game two, or perhaps struggling offenses by Boston in game one and Milwaukee in game two. It depends on how you look at it. Truth yeah. is probably somewhere in the middle. Stephanie Reddy sets the table for game three tomorrow. Much like the Celtics after game one, the Bucks feel very confident about their defense after game two. With the series tied at one apiece, the focus will certainly be on adjustments, but it may be more important to know who you are as a team. It's important for us to be the team that we, we've been this whole time, you know, and have our offensive identity intact. We're making changes going into game three, but I, I definitely think there were things that, uh, especially offensively, that, that we kind of got away from that are that are kind of ingrained in our team DNA. We just have to be ourselves. You know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel or anything like that. The thing about basketball is such a fluid sport. You have to be able to adapt to whatever uh, whatever's called upon, and you may go into a game with a certain game plan, and the game may dictate something else. It's going to come down to the little things. You know, who wants it more? Who's going to make those winning plays? Who's going to trust each other more? Um, who's going to play harder, longer together. Well, if you're the Celtics, you're going to get a turn against Giannis Antetokounmpo at some point in this series. And here's how the various defenders have fared so far against him in the minutes they've had. Al Horford, notably, has held Giannis to 6 of 22. Horford really no more is a great team defender than an individual defender, but the number's pretty good so far. Um, what are the Celtics doing against Giannis so far, and, and how effective has it been in your opinion? Well, when, when you look at elbows and boxes, right, you know, they, they're really almost in a 1-2-2 two, two zone, and it's very tight. And then there's no unnecessary help. And what I mean by that, you know, when Giannis has the ball by himself, okay, ball you, man, you got four guys looking, and then Jalen Brown loses sight of Porter. But look at the defensive hand, right? So they got hands up. There's no unnecessary help. They're forcing Giannis to take tough shots, keeping him out of the lane. And when he does penetrate into the lane, their body's on him and they're making him take difficult shots. Now, we know Giannis is good enough to figure it out, mm -hmm. and he will figure it out. But at the end of the day, what Boston did in game two was made it a little bit more difficult for him to get into the lane and it made it a little bit more difficult for Milwaukee to make shots from the three because they were good enough to help and then recover to their offensive player.